In this video, we're going to talk about how to take the antiderivative, which is the reverse process of taking the derivative. Normally, you would start with a derivative and then try and work backwards to find some original function. So let, let's see if, without me even telling you how to do it, let's see if you could do it. If you knew that the derivative of f with respect to x was x squared, what was the original function f? Well, maybe you would see that if I took the derivative and got x squared, then that meant my original function had a power of 3, right? Because when I go from x cubed, when I take its derivative, that 3 gets reduced by 1, so I would go to 2. Okay, cool. Well, what would need to be in front of x cubed so that when I multiplied it by 3, I got, this looks like 1, right? There's like a 1 in front of that. Well, it would have to be... 1 third. Okay, well, now I can think if I take the derivative of 1 third x cubed, do I get x squared as my derivative? Yeah, it checks out. Okay, well, let's, so let's see if we can do that again. What if I knew the derivative with respect to x of some function was 2x? What would the original function be? Well, I know that my x would have to be squared. And in order to get a 2 here in front, I would need to just leave a 1 out there, right? Because 2 times 1 is going to give me that 2 that I need in front of the x. So I could say 1x squared or just x squared. OK, well, let's, let's write down. Wh what, what did we do? How did we start with x to some power of n and then work backwards to find the original function. Well, we did two things. First, we raised that power by 1. Then, you can see, like here, we took 2. We raised it by 1. Then, we took that power and we divided 1 by that new power. Okay, great. Um, well, let's talk about the, the formal notation. How, how do I say I am taking the derivative, or sorry, the antiderivative of x to the n? Well, we're going to talk about why we use all of these letters um, and operators in, in another video, but for right now, I'm just going to sort of tell you what they are and what we call them so that you can learn to speak math. In order to say that you are going to take the antiderivative, of x to the n, you use the Latin letter summa, which is like a really long, tall s. So this summa means take the antiderivative. Now, again, we're going to talk more about this in a later video, but another word that is often used to say take the antiderivative is integrate. Put briefly, a derivative is always a rate of something, like the derivative of position is velocity, uh, and velocity is a rate of how your position changes with time. So when you work backwards, it's almost like you're adding up the rate into something new. We'll talk about it later. So summa means take the antiderivative, and it also means integrate. So here's a weird word for what goes inside of your operator. This thing right here, x to the end, we call this the integrand. And to let myself know what variable I am going to be doing calculus with, um, I'm going to use exactly what I do when I take the derivative. This infinitesimal, remember these are called infinitesimals, on the bottom lets me know that I'm supposed to do calculus to x. So the same thing happens here. Outside of our integrand, we put an infinitesimal, or little d, and then x, so that I know I need to take the antiderivative with respect to x. So that's how we write that. And again, this is the thing we take with respect to. We could say WTR, so you remember, with respect to. 
Now, oftentimes it's helpful to say what it is that you're finding is this thing called an integral um, because you're integrating. And so we use a capital letter I to represent it whenever we can. So the way that I would read this math equation is the integral I equals summa, the antiderivative of x to the n, the thing in our integrand, with respect to x. So I know that that integral will be equal to 1 over n plus 1 times x to the n plus 1. Now we're almost finished, finished with this equation. Um, the one thing that's really weird and tricky about the antiderivative uh, is that it's true that the antiderivative of x squared is 1 third x cubed. Because I know the derivative of 1 third x cubed is x squared. But what if my original function was 1 third x cubed plus 10? What would the derivative be? Well, the derivative would still be x squared. Because when I take the derivative of 10, it goes away. It's just 0. Now, that leaves us with a problem whenever we're taking the antiderivative. It means that there could be some constant number in the original function that we would have no way of knowing what it is when we take the antiderivative. Um, we normally call that c. So like, let's say f was x squared plus c. We use c because it's some constant. Maybe it's 1, maybe it's 2, maybe it's 1,000. When I take the derivative of that function with respect to x, I'm just going to get 2x because whatever this constant is, it goes away. So when we are taking the antiderivative, when we are finding the integral, we always have to add c plus c to the end of our equation. So this is what is known as the reverse power rule. really good at a capital and lowercase letters. Okay, the reverse power rule. And what we are doing here is finding the integral, or we're integrating. And since we can never know what c is, we call this the constant of integration. Since we can never know what c was, uh, we have to say that this process of integrating is indefinite. And oftentimes the antiderivative is referred to as the indefinite integral. integral, the indefinite integral. Okay, let's see if we can use this super weird equation. Find the antiderivative or indefinite integral of these three functions. Okay, so let, let's rewrite it up here so that it's right in front of us. You should have it on your paper. The integral is equal to summa, which is our operator that tells us to take the antiderivative, of x to the n, the function that it gives us, with respect to x. And the rule, reverse power rule for us, is there will be something in front that is the power plus 1 divided by the power plus 1, and then x to the n plus 1. Then, of course, we have to add this c, the constant of integration, because there's no way for us to know what it is, or if it's even there at all. All right, let's put this to practice. So to find this integral, I would say summa 6x squared minus 2x plus 3dx. Okay, so that tells me I am taking the integral of 6x squared minus 2x plus 3. And I'm doing that with respect to the variable x. OK, then I apply the reverse power rule. x squared goes up by 1. And then I divide 6 by the new power 3. OK, moving on to the next one. x goes up by a power of 1, so x squared. And then I divide 2 by that new power. The 3, um, so this is always kind of like saying uh, x to the 0. And when you raise that power, you're raising it to 1. So you're just going to have x, because x to the 1 is just x. 
and then you divide three by one, which is just one. So that there's that, sorry, divide three by one, which is just three. So get back to how it was originally written. The antiderivative of uh, three is three x, which makes sense, right? Because the derivative of three x is three. Okay, good. What am I missing? Well, maybe there was some constant, so I have to write plus c. And I might want to simplify this because six over three is just two, so two x cubed. And two over two is just one, so x squared plus three x plus c. Congratulations, I took the integral. All right, let's do this next one, g of x. The integral, so summa, of four x squared plus two with respect to x. Well, I raise x to the power of three, then I divide four by that new power, three. And the two just becomes two x. And I have to add plus c because there could be some constant in my original function that I have no way of knowing by taking the antiderivative. Good job. Uh, you could simplify that if you want, but I think that looks good. All right, let's do this third one. The integral, summa, negative t squared plus t plus 1. Now, here I wouldn't use a, a dx because it's obvious to me that t is the variable in our equation. So we would write little dt on the outside. Uh, and when I take the antiderivative, or when I integrate, I would raise t to the power of 3, and then I would divide what's in front of t by that, so this would be negative 1 over 3. Uh, and then this next term, t, would become t squared, and I need to divide 1 by that new power, and the plus 1 would just become plus t. Then, of course, plus c. Okay, so this gives me, I could rewrite this a little bit or simplify it, negative t cubed over 3 plus t squared over 2 plus t plus c. So that's how you use the reverse power rule to take the antiderivative. Um, now, it might be a good idea for us to try one problem where we need to rearrange the original equation. So let's find the integral, or the antiderivative, of, oh, I don't know, how about 3 over the root of x with respect to x. OK. So the first thing that I would do, um, you know, I don't, I, we haven't really talked about this explicitly yet, but when you have a constant in calculus, you don't, you don't do anything with it. It always comes out. So I would actually take that three that's on top since it's constant. Um, and what's common when you're taking the antiderivative with this integral notation is to put it outside your integral. So that's the first thing that I would do. Um, and it lets me know that I'm just going to take the antiderivative of 1 over x squared, or sorry, 1 over root x, and then multiply it by 3. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this uh, to be x to the negative 1 half. Because that makes it a little easier for me to see what the power is and what's going to happen to it. And I'm going to rewrite this over here. So i equals. Um, now, when I work with this power, negative 1 half is going to be x to the plus 2 over 2. So that's going to give me x to the positive 1 half. Okay, then I need to divide by that positive 1 half. So 1 over 1 over 2, which is the same thing as multiplying by 2. And when I apply the 3, I'm going to get 6x to the 1 half. And if I wanted to simplify that a little bit, I would write 6 root x. Okay, so that's an example of um, two things. First of all, dealing with constants, pulling them outside of the integral. Uh, and then second of all, what to do with something like 1 over root x, where you need to rewrite it, and then apply the reverse power rule. So, yeah. 
that's how you take the antiderivative. Um, oh, you know what? Wait, wait, I forgot. Did you catch it? The antiderivative or the indefinite integral. So I have to add plus c to my equation because I don't know what c is. And that makes that's what makes it indefinite. So in this video, you will learn how to take the antiderivative, um, which is also known as the indefinite integral. The process of doing this can sometimes be called antideriving or indefinite integration. You're super smart and you're super awesome and you did a great job. This video is done.